So at the time of recording, it's been roughly nine months since I purchased the Comica VM30 and have been using it for several videos. And I have obviously rearranged my office since then. And I have used other shotgun microphones as well as using dedicated, you know, I would say dynamic microphones for my office and everything. And I have some thoughts and opinions of this microphone and why I think it would be a great addition to those who are looking to do something unique with their setup because of the capabilities of something like this and uh, being wireless. And what I mean by that is that I'm able to do something like this and talk to you for a talking head video or do something like this and talk to you guys for a different angle and then get in the whole room and stuff like that for our office. Or if I want to take it to another level, I can come over here and use it at a actual, you know, gaming, streaming setup or whatever, or desktop setup. Obviously, I would have to, you know, remove this microphone, use one of the attachments or whatever, but you essentially get the point. So at the time of recording that video about nine months ago, I purchased the Comica VM30 with my own money and it was around $180. And I would have put on screen roughly what it would be costing right now if there is a price discrepancy or something like that. So you can i would say be able to know what you're looking at if you're deciding to pick this up for yourself or not for your own content creation needs now this microphone does have some cons and that's why i kind of wanted to go back and talk about it after using it for some videos and obviously having some more time with the actual product and this is something that i'm thinking about doing with other products so if you want me to do that as far as going back and testing them and giving updates or whatever on them then let me know by leaving a like on the video or leaving a comment down below i think this could be very interesting or whatever to see if what i think about the products from my initial review you know after months or a year having it or wherever going back and reviewing it again if my thoughts and opinions have changed or not all right so first off let's go ahead and just get the cons out the way i think this microphone is meant to be traditionally like a traditional shotgun microphone which means that it's always boomed out of i would say frame or you don't see it in the actual video itself and the one of the cons to me for something like that is if you're in a unsound treated room like i am for example i'm gonna go ahead and turn off the vsts so you can hear how the microphone sounds without any processing being done maybe some normalization and i would say post as far as like editing but this is the way it sounds so if you're wearing headphones just be uh, i would say warned all right, so now you should be hearing it with no EQs being done, no post-processing, anything like that. And you can see how echoey, I would say traditionally, my room sounds. And I will go ahead and take off this little protection stuff or wherever that comes with the microphone so you can get, I would say, a more broader general sense of what I'm talking about. All right, so now that I've taken it off or wherever, this is kind of how it would sound. Again, if you had it this close and you would still have to edit this or wherever in post. And now I'm gonna move the microphone a little bit away from me so you can get what I'm talking about. All right, so now I have the microphone roughly around this length away from me and you could still kind of see it in the shot because it's not boomed overhead, but you essentially get the what I'm talking about as far as the distance from me to the microphone if I was to have it boomed overhead obviously some tones and reflections you know would change or whatever with my voice but this essentially is what you would expect or wherever if you didn't have any vsts or plugins or even this on so i'm gonna put this back on or wherever so you can see how it sounds when i put this on and it's a, a way traditionally where people would have it so now we have this added to the microphone itself and you can see how this looks or wherever so obviously if you boom this out of frame you're probably going to still pick up little remnants of this because of how much it adds to the microphone so you will probably have to boom this even further away and you can tell that that probably wouldn't be very good if you were trying to eq the microphone because again you want the audio source to be as close to the microphone as possible so any amount of eq being done is going to be great and all but again you still want the microphone to be relatively close so now what I'm going to do is leave it where it is right now, turn on VSTs. All right, so now we have the VSTs applied and everything, and you can probably tell the discrepancy of my voice between having it this far away versus where it was in the beginning. And now I'm gonna take off the protection wherever and talk, and you can see again, essentially, if you boom this out of frame, what you are essentially going to get. All right, so now I've taken it off, left the microphone in the same distance or wherever from me. And again, this is the way it's going to sound if it has 
the actual BSTs or whatever and plugins added or whatever to it, the same ones that I was using when I had the microphone closer. And you can see again, this distance is the same. And you can see if I was just to raise the microphone up a little bit and tilt it towards me just out of frame, it would probably be, you know, right around here where my finger is or whatever, just out of frame. And you can see that it's going to be the same distance. And you can see again, what you're getting now again my voice is being directed straight into the capsule so obviously if it's higher up and angled at me my voice won't go straight into the end of the capsule so again there's going to be some a little bit of discrepancies but i would have to move the arm and do all this stuff or whatever and i'm just trying to do all that i'm just trying to get a point across and you could probably tell that um that you know further away even with the vsts and plugins active for this kind of shot you still would probably want to just turn off the vsts and edit them in post and i think that would be a very bad disservice to you know somebody who's going to pick this up and have the versatility of using it so what are you supposed to do well, like I said, you could have it closer in the frame or wherever or in your shot and talking into the microphone and everything and still get really good audio. You're just going to have to be comfortable with it always being in frame because essentially what I'm talking about with using this and the pros about it is that I can actively use VSTs and plugins while I'm recording into OBS through the Wavelink software. Now, if you don't have an Elgato, you know, uh, product or wherever to be able to take access of the VST and plugins through their Wavelink software to apply to any, I would say, audio source that you're bringing into the software, you can still essentially do what I'm doing with all the different camera angles and all that stuff and this microphone by using, I would say, something like OBS and using the VSTs and plugins through their filter, you know, properties and all that stuff, wherever to essentially do the same thing I'm doing with this microphone. And what you can do is get a capture card, like a $10 capture card, bring the audio source or wherever from your camera because you can plug the 3.5 millimeter jack into your camera and then capture the audio coming from the HDMI capture card and then you know put that audio into an audio source inside of OBS and then apply VSTs and plugins and stuff that way to get essentially what I'm getting as far as good sounding audio and you don't need an Elgato product or anything like that and the reason why I bring that up is because yes you could just use a microphone like this but because streaming and content creating is becoming so much, so much popular and people are trying to do unique stuff with their streams, I'm capturing all this with OBS. Everything that you saw earlier or wherever, me having those different camera angles and stuff, all that's being captured in OBS. I have a dedicated microphone for my streaming setup, which is just like this, a dynamic microphone over there. But the audio interface that I'm using, the Wavelink software and, and everything like that, only has enough inputs for one XLR input it doesn't even have a 3.5 millimeter jack input it has a headphone out and that's pretty much it so what you do is i have this with the wireless transmitter going into the actual sony zv e10 mark one and what i'm doing is running it the hdmi cord into a usb capture card and having that audio from that capture card being brought into wavelength and i'm applying a vst or a plugin or wherever to get the audio to sound this good at least in my personal opinion i think it sounds pretty good and you can do that with any hdmi to usb capture card or wherever that allows you to transmit audio over the actual capture card and like I said, you can do that in OBS and just apply VSTs and plugins. And you can have a very unique setup where you're taking the microphone, you're picking it up, you're talking to your stream, you're doing another camera angle wherever taking up your whole room and stuff and you walk around holding it or something like that or you have a pole somewhere else in your room like a boom pole or something like that you can attach it to through the various accessories or whatever that come with the actual product and be able to really do something very unique with your live streams or your recordings or wherever and your audio is always going to sound good because again you already have those vsts and plugins applied while recording and again you can do all this stuff in post and editing and everything like that but that's going to be somewhat tricky if you're brand new to content creation and you picked up the Sony ZV-E10 Mark II, which I think this is going to be a very good, I would say, beginner shotgun microphone or wherever to get really good audio because it allows you to be very versatile with your camera setup or wherever. And you can do a lot of unique things where you don't need an XLR cable, you know what I'm saying? And if you don't want to go around and have to spend a whole bunch of money for a really good wireless lavalier system like the DJI or the Rode systems or whatever out there, 
you can use something like this and still achieve wireless audio essentially the thing about it is a lot of people are going to be like well there's budget wireless systems out there from the likes of uh, hollyland or anything else but at least in my personal opinion and my testing a lot of those with the way i'm using this microphone is not going to be able to be achieved with the vsts and plugins active while you're recording and what I mean by that is that I'm in an unsound treated room like I displayed earlier. And the problem with trying to go in and EQ and stuff like that, that's going to be an added step that you're going to have to do in your editing process. Not to mention the way I do things, all my cameras are color graded other than obviously the webcam for my streaming. I don't have to color grade everything. Everything looks the way I want it to look and everything like that. And all my microphones are EQ'd and everything as long as I'm staying in my office, of course. So when it comes to wireless systems, the ones that I have tested, which is uh, up to six at this point, one I didn't do a review on because it was trash and I told the company that the other ones I have tested, the only one that sounded good in this scenario and I didn't have to go in and post and edit or whatever to get the sound decent was the Comica Venmo Q that they sent out for a review. And that's because this thing costs like 250. You know what I'm saying? And it's a more premium professional, like it's starting to get there. It's at the like the bottom of it, but it's starting to get there up in price and quality and all that stuff. But even the Comica Boom XDs or wherever that has the lapel mic, I would justify saying that you still probably want to tweak it a little bit in post. But the other ones that I have tested, like the likes from Godox, the likes from um Cinco and all that stuff or wherever, they just around, like I said, below $200 they don't sound good in an unsounded treated room with these types of vsts and plugins running in the background while you're recording and like i said you still have to do that in post and some people might be okay with that with color grading and editing and stuff like that but if you wanted a tool which these things are and you wanted to smooth your workflow and not have to do so much in post and just focus on whatever content creation you're doing and just chop up the video add some music or something maybe some graphical overlays or something like that and just go or even like i said use something like this for your live streams you're not going to be able to essentially do that with wireless systems if you're in an i would say a traditional room where a lot of content creators a lot of streamers and i would say also a lot of people who are going to pick up the sony zv e10 mark uh, 2 1 whatever it is and just starting out the content creation journey i would reckon record adventure that people don't have you know sound panels they don't have sound blankets their rooms are not sound treated they're not you know acoustically uh attuning their space or wherever to to get the best out of the microphones before they drag them into i would say an editing program to add vsts and plugins and eq the microphones or whatever and that's the discrepancy that i've noticed between me using some of these wireless systems as far as the lavalier microphones go versus somebody else who's have covered them or wherever and i'm like how did it get the microphone to sound so good without adding any vsts or plugins and i'm asking them and they in the comments and they are saying that they didn't touch the audio it's just how the microphone sounds and then maybe some normalization or whatever in post and i'm like that's impossible because i have the same wireless lavalier system and i've tested it and it doesn't sound that good and the reason why is because when you look at their space they have the sound panels they have the sound blankets they're in a acoustically tuned room or something like that so they're not going to run into a small bedroom or wherever that doesn't have anything on the walls and all that stuff and it's just sound reverberation and everything like that or they're somewhat in a bigger spot where they don't really have too much echo but the sound is able to dissipate before it hits the walls and comes back into the microphone and you can see like i said the discrepancies or wherever between me doing it in a small bedroom or wherever versus somebody who has a maybe a small bedroom but they have sound blankets panels and all that stuff and like i said i don't have to really worry about doing all that as long as i have the protection stuff or wherever on the microphone and i have the microphone in the shot close to my mouth and i'm just talking so that's kind of the pro I would say to this microphone is that if you don't mind having the microphone in shot and I know some people don't like it and I personally don't like it because it doesn't look professional but my only other course is to use a dynamic microphone like this in the shot to not have to do all the EQing in post and sometimes I want to be able to you know move the microphone into another spot but I can't do that really with this because I would have to run a super long 
XLR cable to do the camera angle back there. My only other choice is to use a wireless lavalier system. And even with the Kama Venmo Q, wherever being really good as far as the audio and stuff and me liking it, I still, in my personal opinion, if I was going to do a shot like I did earlier in that other camera angle, I would have to somewhat touch it in post. And sometimes you just don't have the time to sit there and do that. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you have you, life goes on. You know what I mean? You have other things to do. So having a microphone like this and yes, sometimes holding it or just having I have a actual boom pull stand microphone stand that I could put this on for that angle over there or any other angle in the room or wherever. And I don't have to hold it, but I could still have it in the shot and record a video and still get really good audio quality. And that's why I really do like this microphone and recommend it. The other con that might be big or wherever, if you're looking at this microphone and you've seen other reviewers, there's been numerous of ones have said that if they use the wireless, I would say receiver to go into the camera or something like that and they're recording the audio, sometimes the audio just cuts out. Sometimes they will go back and post and notice that there's a big audio section missing because randomly the transmission cut out. And it's like they didn't block the, the transmitter to the receiver. They didn't do, you know, what you're not supposed to do when you're using a wireless system. It just randomly cuts out. In my nine months of having it, I've never had it happen. But that is a big red flag that I do want to point out because you're paying as much money as you are for something like this. And that's just not acceptable from a content creation standpoint. But I never personally had that. But you might run into that. So again, do your research, do your due diligence and make sure that you're coming to a informed decision before you purchase something like this. Now, a way to get circumvent that and get around that people have done is just run a cable uh, or like a extension wire or something like that from the cable that comes in the box from the input or output or whatever of the microphone itself straight into the camera. And that is one way you can do it. So you don't have to worry about using the wireless uh, receiver or whatever or anything like that. And you won't have that dip in audio. The thing about it is now essentially you have a wire coming from the microphone to your camera or to whatever you're you know, capturing the audio from. And obviously that's the problem because we want this thing to be wireless. Obviously, if it's sitting over here, I have it plugged up to USB type C, it's always charging. But if I want to unplug it from the charging cable and just walk around the room like I did, I can do that. And if I'm running the audio straight from the microphone, I'm just going to have this long cable trailing with me. And at that point, I might as well just get a super long XLR cable and just use something like this. You see what I'm saying? So there is some pros there are some cons but overall like i said i'm happy with my own purchase um this is one of the few items that i have purchased doing product reviews that i still use on the daily and i do recommend if you don't mind those cons and stuff like that but at the end of the day like i always say you know your use case scenario better than me and you know how to make an informed decision on your purchase by watching multiple different reviews and seeing if this is right for you but overall like I said, me personally, I am happy. I'm not pushing this product on you. I'm not saying you should go pick it up or anything like that. Like I said, it's not going to be for everybody. Some people don't mind booming it out of the shot. Some people don't mind using a wireless lavalier system, going into their software and color grading and, you know, EQing a microphone because they're already going in there to edit anyways. But for me, I want a simpler workflow. I don't have to, I don't want to have to worry about, OK, is my microphone sounding good? Is it EQ good? All that stuff. I want all that stuff to be done, like my color grading or wherever is color graded through OBS. My microphone's EQ and all that stuff or wherever while I'm recording. So I can just focus on doing a product review or, you know, doing whatever kind of video I'm presenting to my audience. And it's quick, fast and easy. All I have to do is chop it up in post, add some graphical overlays, music, whatever. And it just simplifies the, the process of me doing a video. And that's what these tools should be doing. I shouldn't have to go in extra, even if it's the road, the DJI system, whatever, and do all that in post. Because again, I have a wife, I have a son. I only have so many hours allocated to me doing content creation within a day. And if you're color grading, EQing, and on top of that, get gathering research information, adding it to your video, unboxing a product, doing a review testing and all that stuff, simultaneous B-roll and everything, if you have to do all that stuff, that's a lot to add to the plate of uh, post work. And like I've said, with the Sony ZV-E10 Mark II, that's why I picked it up because if I wanted to do a time lapse or do anything like that, or a cine vlog mode and everything, all that stuff that that camera can do, I would also have to do in post. And you can see how it's just ballooning the workload and the time is just ballooning into something that's just not 
feasible and it doesn't make any sense to have to do. And that's why I say something like this is really good. It's just you're going to have to have a way like a USB capture card or software where that allows you to add VSTs or plugins like OBS or the Wavelink software or anything else that allows you to EQ a 3.5 millimeter jack, I would say microphone input. So that's just over my overall thoughts on the microphone. Let me know yours down in the comments down below. If you're new to the channel and you found this video informative or helpful in any way, shape or form, you can let me know, like I said, by leaving a like on the video. If you're also new to the channel and you want to see some more videos from me, then you can always subscribe. That would be greatly appreciated. If you want to take it a further step, then you can join the channel through the memberships that we have here. And I would be greatly appreciated of that as well. Until next time, guys, y'all take care. Have a squid day. God bless you and yours. And deuces, everybody. Much love.